We had a tire issue just now. We're going to have a problem there because that tire came off of one of these four cars. Oh, actually, it's tape. The caution comes out. Looks like a little bit of sheet metal and tape. So our fourth caution will come out now. Again, at the halfway point. Dakota Armstrong was still strong, but not out front. It was Grant Infinger that was leading when we crossed the halfway point. We had three cautions. The third one was big. There you see Brian Silas in the 11. I think there's a piece missing from that car, possibly. This is the look at the second car. That's Chase Matteo in the 14 car. Right behind him is Brian Silas. Had that had that patch on the right front fender. That patch came off. Chase Mattioli right now is being shown in the 13th position on the lead lap. Scott Stencil in the 42 car running with that group was also on the lead lap. He's in 14th. Brandon McReynolds, as you mentioned, had trouble. Brian Silas also, and they are laps down. Brandon several laps down, and Brian Silas right now being shown one lap down. Brandon McReynolds scored nine laps down. They came in, put water into that race car to try to cool it off. Got his hands sticking out the window now, maybe cooling his hands off a bit here at Talladega. We'll slip away and be right back with more racing. Final four laps of racing. Tom Hesser trying to make the move on Joey Coulter. This is a battle for the fifth position. Takes it away, and Hessert moves to the fourth spot now. It's finally coming. Tom Hessert pulls to the outside of Steve Arvin in a battle for second. The outside line is moving. Here comes Hessert battling for the lead. Steve Arpin tries to get to the back bumper of the 0-9 of Grant Infinger. The outside line is moving. Tim George Jr. behind the 77. When they go through the tri-oval, it'll be three laps to go. Infinger moves back out front. Infinger leads this lap. Look at the, look at the speed they pick up when Steve Arpin got to the back bumper of that 0-9 car of Infinger. Less than three to go. The outside line was challenging for the lead, and now they've dropped back to third. Grant Enfinger right now, he's watching the mirror, Kenny, more than he's watching out the windshield. Right, because he doesn't want Arpin to get in front of the 77 car. And Arpin gave up the bottom of the racetrack. Now he comes back down in front of the 77. That was close. But here comes Dakota with the run. Dakota was out of the contention here about four or five laps ago. Now he's got a good shot. He's side by side for third with his teammate looking to get beside of Arpin. There'll be two laps of racing to go when they come through the trial. Right now, infinger has got two huge laps to make the right decisions here. Uh, and Dakota's got to run. Patrick Shelter, uh, that's going to be big. With all that know. damage. One other thing that they're going to have to factor in, there are four cars in front of this lead pack that are lap down cars. They're going to catch them. What will they do when they get up to them? Four and five wide coming out of turn two down the back stretch. Watch in finger now. See him all the way to the outside. He's been against the yellow line since the restart. Now he's at the outside because that's where the 55 car went. He's doing a fabulous job with his mirror, with his mirror which is his job to do. Three wide, four wide coming out of turn four and into the tri-oval. Here they come to the slower lap traffic. In finger in front of Steve Arpin. When they come to the stripe, it'll be the final lap. One lap to go from Talladega. Infinger in front. Right now, it's Infinger's job to keep the 55 behind him. He has no control if they get three or four wide. He's got to keep the most closest car behind him. Right now, Dakota has a run on the outside. Dakota Armstrong, the strong car, coming out onto the back stretch. They're moving back and forth. Jockeying for position as they go down the back stretch. Look at Hessert on the inside. Craig Ghost gives Tom Hessert a shove. Hessert looking to get by the 22. Now problems. The 55 of Arpin spins. Coulter gets turned around. No caution flag as of yet. The field making their way into the trioval. They still don't throw the yellow. It's going to be the 22. Dakota Armstrong coming out of the trioval will win at Talladega. Patrick Shelter, with all that damage to his car, comes home in second. The caution now comes out. It was the 55 that got sideways in three and four. He was running in the second position. They were two and three wide coming through the final turn. 
and it was Dakota Armstrong who was the benefactor of the problems with the 55. Dakota Armstrong charges to the front and wins at Talladega. I'm telling you, with 10 laps to go, it looked like he was out of contention, I Kenny. Th I thought they had problems. They were all the way at the back there. At the stripe, Patrick Shelter was shown second. Tim George Jun Jun Jr. was third. Craig Ghost comes home fourth. Mikey Kyle in fifth. How about Scott Stencil with a seventh place finish? Great job by him. Leading with one lap to go, the 0 9 of Grant Infinger. He's being scored in the sixth position. What a race. What a finish. That's why they don't pay anybody till they get to the start finish line for the checkered <laughs> flag. Man. Grant Infinger looking so strong going into turn number three blocking everyone he could but it was the strong run on the inside of the racetrack the 22 Dakota Armstrong grabbed his first pull in the Arca Racing Series earlier today and now he celebrates his first ever win in the Arca Racing Series presented by Remax and Menards. Kenny, I remember you telling me a year, a year and a half ago that this kid had a lot of talent, great family, and it's great to see him with some early success. I, we, we ran him three or four times last year, maybe a few more net, and he did real good and good family, and the, the kid's got a lot of talent. He showed it today as he was able to play the chess game on the final turn of Talladega Super Speedway. Get out front. Let's take a look now. This is coming off turn two on the very last lap. He's Grant in fifth Finger, spot. Grant Finger still with the lead. Side by side, Steve Arpin on the in the 55. Now they start bumping. Patrick Shelter starts bumping the 22. The 77 starts bumping the 55, and then the bottom of the racetrack opens. They're three wide, and the 22 gets out front. The 77. Looks like a parachute was thrown on that race car as he drops back. The 55 was spinning. They were three and four wide coming out of the final turn as they were headed to the tri-oval. Down here in turn number three, the 55 is going to get together and the 66. You see Steve right there. He kind of moves to the inside. It looked like he'd committed to the middle. And then the 16 of Joey Coulter was there on the bottom. They made contact. And then Joey got turned around when he got nudged from behind. That was all just real close. Everyone j jockeying around. It was no. There was when Arpin goes sideways, and then Hal Martin gets into the back of the 16. He goes sideways. Those two race cars would continue on. Arpin comes home 14. There's another view right there. There's Joey Coulter. You see, he looked like he had a hole right then on the inside, and then Steve came down a little bit. They got, they made a little contact as you mentioned. Then the 16 got nudged from Hal Martin from behind. Steve Arpin. Straighten the back out. Back up on the racetrack. Grab the gear. Go, go, go. <laughs> back in the throttle. And now we go down to Wendy Venerini, who's with second place, Patrick Shelter. Can you imagine this car, Patrick Shelter? Take a look at it. Finish second. They say aerodynamics are so important here, and the Bear Bond did its job for Patrick Shelter. What a ride those final laps. Yeah, it really was. You know, we lost a draft there. Uh, we got a little damage. Lost a draft. We thought it was going to go a lap down, but uh, the Buffalo Wings and Rings Dodge Charger was real strong today. The guys did an awesome job getting everything back together for us. The last final laps, you know, I seen outside uh, row moving, so I moved up to the outside. And, you know, we had a good push from the six, you know. Brandon's, he's doing real good. And, uh, you know, I just can't thank these guys enough for working so hard. You came into this race third, but you gained some points because the guys running for the championship finished behind you. That's got to feel good. Yeah, you know, that's what we got to have. We got to have top five runs, and we got to beat the guys that we're uh, uh, going against in the championship points. You know, we got to finish in front of them. That's what it takes. All right, congratulations to Patrick Shelter coming home second with this machine. Thanks, Wendy. Dakota Armstrong making his way to victory lane, and we will hear from Dakota coming out of the tri-oval. That's what he saw. A beautiful sight as the checkered flag flew, and the celebration began. How about that? The first win for Dakota Armstrong. It happens at the biggest racetrack on the circuit.